song says everybody hurts sometimes. So how are we to respond to the hurt and anger that we feel from betrayal, abuse, and rejection? Well, in The Healing of the Heart, Pastor Kwame Frimpong shares the truths that he's learned about forgiveness and healing. Good to have you with us today, sir. As we, I've been here today. We talk about, again, the, the healing of the heart, but just so we can get to know you a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Kwame, tell us a little bit about your story, where you're from, and, and how you kind of came to, to know the Lord and be in the place that you're at today. I'm from Ghana, West Africa, mm -hmm. uh, and um, in the year 1981, I, in, in Ghana, all the high schools have what we call scriptural union. Mm -hmm. that handles devotion in all the high schools. In, in the public schools. In the public schools. Mm -hmm. And one of those meetings, I gave my life to Christ in 1981. Mm -hmm. And um, many things happened between the day I got born again and how God called me. And, yeah. and one, of the, one of the issues that I faced, out of it, I wrote the book, The Hymn of, of yeah. the Heart. Yeah. So the, what, what was the, uh, the circumstance behind that situation that kind of brought you to a place of knowing the importance of what it means to be gracious, to be merciful, to be mm -hmm. able to forgive and get past the hurt that others can cause in our life. My great-grandmother raised me up in the village, and um, I loved her. She loved me. Um, and, but one day there was a family gathering. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the um, uh, m members asked, who is the most ugliest person in the family? And uh, my grandma said, it's Kwame. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is exactly what happened. People laughed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but inwardly, yeah. I was damaged. You were hurt. Yeah. She took my image away. Mm. Yeah. I mean, everything within me was just gone. Mm. I did not like myself. I did not like taking pictures. Wow. Uh, I did not like uh, people talking about who is handsome, who is not, who is beautiful. I don't like to be in that topic because who knows? And I did not share this with anybody. Mm -hmm. because I trusted my grandma and I believed she was right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And though it began to work on the inside of me. Mm -hmm. It began to eat me up for years, yeah. many, many years. I had become born again, but I knew I was struggling on the inside of me. Wow. And just, just so you know, if you're the ugliest in your family, <laughs> you must have a very, very handsome Some family. family. <laughs> Thank you so much. You look pretty good to me. <laughs> okay, so how did you work past that? I mean, how did that forgiveness start to, uh, to take place in your heart? One day, I, I came across a scripture in the Bible that says, For we are fearfully and wonderfully made, mm -hmm. Psalm 139. And uh, I began to understand that we are made in the image of God. And I knew that scripture. But this time, every now and then, God will let you give you a, a scripture that will really take you to the next level of your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that began to work on the inside of me. And then God began to teach me that if, if I could experience healing, I need to forgive my grandmother. Okay, mm -hmm. the, but did, does that healing process include, did it for you include going to your grandmother saying you hurt me? She was this. dead and gone. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I always say you must forgive the dead man. Uh -huh. uh, uh, although she was dead and gone, I, I had to release her from my heart. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the first thing I needed to do was to pray and ask God to touch my broken heart. Because mm -hmm. I believe that there's no formula to hurt, whether it's the death of a loved one or somebody mm -hmm. says something to you or life not fair, whatever you experience, there's no formula. The, 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 the solution is the same thing, prayer to God. Mm -hmm. Prayer takes your focus off of the issue and, and dwell your mind on God. Mm -hmm. Because whatever happens in life wants to depress you, wants to feel bad and to, to look bad and to look down. But as you begin to call on God, two things. Number one, ask God to touch your heart. Mm -hmm. I believe that when you are broken, nobody can touch you like God. Mm -hmm. I believe that the presence of God yeah. is powerful enough to absorb mm -hmm. the pain that we deal with. Mm -hmm. And, and even to forgive someone, I call it grace prayer, to forgive someone. Sometimes forgiveness may be easier. Other times it may be difficult. For instance, somebody can forgive people easily, but may not be able to forgive himself or herself easily. Mm -hmm. Some people can forgive easily, but not be able to forgive their past easily. Whatever the situation is, I believe prayer to God is yeah. able to help us overcome that. Yeah, yeah. there are many, seems to be many reasons why people hang on to unforgiveness, yes. uh, and it really does take a revelation mm -hmm. and, a, and a touch from the Holy Spirit to 
for the light to go on to be able to release that, that kind of pain. Uh, for someone watching today that's having a difficult time, you know, what you've just said is very powerful uh, to ask God to heal your hurt and pain. Uh, but if, if, if they're having a hard time even considering the possibility of giving forgiveness or, or releasing someone from the hurt that was caused upon them, what would you say to that person? The very first thing I would ask, I would say is ask God the grace to do it. To do it. Mm -hmm. So God's ability. God's ability. Yeah. Ask God the grace. Um, when Hannah, uh, we know in 1 Samuel, when she came to the Lord, she said, remember me. She said, I am a woman of affliction. She said, I'm pouring my pain before the Lord. And, and, and God understands our heart. Mm -hmm. So asking God to give you the grace to even consider that, I believe, pleases God more than, more than anything else. Okay, you're saying we're moving from forgiveness. Not only are we required to forgive someone, and I think sometimes we look at forgiveness as a duty yes because oh if I don't forgive God won't forgive me right. and that means I'm going to be separated from him I'm not going to spend eternity <laughs> with God that's right but you're saying graciously forgive mm. so what's that that almost in my mind seems like you're taking it to another level cause see I believe that if you read the whole Bible every mm -hmm. time people offend you or people hurt you God has a reward for you for forgiving that person mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a reward Okay. When Abraham forgave the king for, taking his, for, for even taking his wife to his house, when Abraham forgave, the next Bible says in the next chapter that God remembered Sarah and she had Isaac. Mm -hmm. When Stephen prayed for the people who were stoning him, heavens was opened. When Job prayed for his friends who, who offended him, God turned his captivity around. For Jesus said, when people offend you, pray for them, for great is your reward. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, are you going to dwell on the reward or on the pain? Well, I, mm -hmm. think, I think we bypass that part, that there is a reward. A reward. Yes. For, for, for just um, for giving people, there's a reward, a tremendous reward for that. Mm -hmm. And that, is, that becomes your promise from the Lord. That God said, I'm going to reward you for letting go of things that were done to you. You also talk about in, uh, in healing of the heart, uh, setting a guard mm -hmm. uh, on your heart. Right. Uh, what does that mean and, and why is that so important? It is important, but in this life, you know, I always see, I see life as, uh, I'm not a mechanic, but the engine has water tank around it that cools off mm -hmm. the, the, um, the, the engine. There are so many things that we need to do around us so that we don't set up our self offenses. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I believe that if we don't do that from time to time to time, we're going to be, uh, for instance, n number one, it is part of life. To understand that of offenses or hurt or pain is part of, of life. life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, Paul said, I exercise myself daily not to offend people or God. I exercise myself. Mm -hmm. So there are so many things that we need to do, and one of it is to walk in love. Mm -hmm. When, once you understand the love of God, I believe that it helps you protect your, your heart. And, and, and that Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you. He said, love your neighbor as Christ has loved you. Not as love your neighbor, not as you love yourself, but as Christ has loved you. Mm -hmm. So if you understand how much Christ has loved us, you are able to overcome certain things that happens on this side of, the, yeah. of life. Yeah. Uh, and, and to keep your, uh, basically, to keep yourself ready for those offenses, yes. knowing that they'll come, yes. so you don't blow a gasket or because overheat or that kind of thing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. because Jesus said offenses must come. Must come. Must okay, come. so Pastor Kwame, what about the person who says, I, I want to extend forgiveness to someone else, but they won't accept it? Mm -hmm. um, how does that person who's trying to offer forgiveness um, well, deal with that issue. Jesus is clear. He said, if someone offend you, go to him. If he receive you, fine. If not, take one person with you. If they receive it, fine. If not, go to the church. If you have a home church. If not, Jesus says, consider the person as a heathen. Mm -hmm. You have gone through the steps. I believe the first thing that is important is between you and God, your heart condition and God. God, yeah. Because we, there are so many things we cannot control mm -hmm. with people. But once your heart is right with God, because God has to deal with, deal with our heart, before God told Job to pray for his friends, mm -hmm. God dealt, dealt with, with Job. 
It took a while. <laughs> it took like a 37 while. 37 chapters or so. <laughs> he, he dealt with him. Yeah. You know, I, I, I always say, um, how could God tell Job to pray for his friends when he himself was going through a tough time? Mm -hmm. And if Job's prayer was powerful, why don't you pray for yourself? Mm. But do you know that in Job chapter 1, we see the devil in action? But because forgiveness was working in the last chapter of Job, we didn't see, I don't know where the devil was. Well, he wasn't there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Job was doubly blessed. Double. Re God gave rewarded, him yeah. I mean, yeah. that's a, a definite reward. In fact, that is one of my, uh, I practice the one, what I do. Because God has a reward for us. It makes forgiveness easier. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, Pastor Kwame, we've just got uh, 30 seconds, a minute left here. Could you pray right now? Just take a look in your camera. Pray for those that are, that are watching right now. If you're struggling with unforgiveness, if you're struggling with offense and hurt, and you, want, you feel the presence of God touching this moment, we're going to believe God for a breakthrough in your life. Go ahead, Pastor. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all the hearts that are watching this TV broadcast today. Lord, I release the balm of Gilead. I release the grace of God. The grace that makes forgiveness easier. The grace that touches and heals the brokenhearted. Father, I am praying right now in Jesus Christ's name that you touch this house like Hannah as they are pouring their souls before you, God, that they will receive your touch. Thank you. And forgive and release every pain in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for joining us today on Harvard.